What you're about to see is a 14 day time lapse of goats and hand tools working together to clear a quarter acre of weed infested land. Bit by bit the goats graze on blackberry, gorse and broom, the three dominant weed species that pose such a fire risk in a climate change era. This is winter, but that doesn't stop on frosty mornings the goats continuing their fire mitigation work. After the goats have made some impact, we move in with hand tools. We uncover old bits of fencing and get them out of the road so as that the goats don't hurt themselves. It is such a pleasure to be working with these chilled out animals every day developing a deeper and deeper bond with them. When they see us coming towards them with hand tools, they move in the direction that we're heading, knowing that those tools signify more food. Here we are on the twelfth day, a remarkable achievement on a site that large equipment can't access. And here's the site on the fourteenth day, we talk about converting weedy forests into grassy woodlands and this is exactly what we mean. So let's go back to day one. And now day 14. This sort of uh, fire and weed mitigation management doesn't cost the earth. It doesn't put up a whole lot of carbon in the atmosphere or a whole lot of pesticides in the water ecologies. Um, and it doesn't use heavy mechanical uh, mulching equipment to get in there and disturb the soil and put the weed cycle back at stage one. So working with neighbours, working with uh, agencies, working with local councils, certainly what we want to do, but it is a shame that um, the two big agencies, DELP and Parks Victoria, are really sort of dragging their feet on this. Parks Victoria have used words like feral, um, uh, collapsing the term feral in relation to well-managed uh, livestock. So they've got a lot of catching up to do in their languaging and thinking about how public lands can be sensitively managed. And as we've said before, that this sort of grazing and uh, browsing really lends itself to getting the forests and the ecologies back into a place where Aboriginal burning techniques can be brought in and, um, and re-established on Jarrah people's country. My name's Dale. Um, yeah, I'm MacDonald, and I'm, I live in Dalesford, Hepburn Springs, up in in Jaja Wadarung country. So I'm I'm neighbour, and I'm like I come next door, you know. Like we hear Jaja, next door is Mukjarin. Yeah, I've been here for a little while, you know, 35 years. Where Patrick's saying, you know along the creek beds and that was the most dangerous and you can't get and fire I'm not a fireman whether fire burns up or fire burns down you know I'm sure it depends on the perspective of the wind on the day you know what what state of mind his spirit in you know where he chooses to burn but um yeah I think it's a good idea to have goats down there you know takes out all the OHS issues you know they can be managed you know they, Go with that terrain, you know. It's all European weed, you know. It's it's all European weed, so why not use um, <laughs> European weed killer that's mobile, which turns into fertilizer, which you know, it's got to be all right. At least a trial, you know. We're finding the um, combination of hand tools and goat method uh, is extremely effective. Um, being able to lock high branches for the goats to get them easily on the ground is so, so much more efficient, effective uh, and we'd really love to get this happening down at Spring Creek down in Hepburn where it's a, um, it's a big fire risk site all along that gully. And you can see it's the middle of winter now and there's lots of flowers on the gorse so from that perspective it's kind of um, interesting that 
with this method you it's possible to actually get rid of a lot of weed seed in the middle of winter when you've got potential flowers and seed coming up uh, rather than waiting till spring or till the growing months. Hi, my name's Sue Savage and my grandson Tasman. I've born and bred in Dalesford and I've lived here in this spot for 36 years with my family. And over the years, it's just in the gullies, it's just got overrun with gauze and blackberries and it's been far too much for me to handle. And my neighbour Patrick come over and explained uh, about the goats and how that would all work naturally and so we've given it a go and only in a few days the impact is amazing and I think it's fantastic so I really hope that the Shire can support Patrick and the others that are doing this wonderful job to to help the area manage their um, the bush My name is Zanny, this is Bijou, um, and I live in this delightful spot uh, where I have enjoyed having uh, the forest to look upon. Ever since I've been here, the summers have been um, nerve-wracking in lots of ways because of the fire risk and because of the fact that to clear that uh, creek um, has not really happened and so it's been a fire hazard so to have the ground kept down to to alleviate a fire hazard i think is a wonderful thing and i'm absolutely thrilled so my name's bob gwisdahl i've been living in this area since 1990 i'm a semi-retired high school teacher um, was in balato when i first got there and took over a few acres of weed infested uh, property particularly on the boundaries with uh, just uh, huge swathes of uh, impenetrable blackberry and gauze and stuff like that and a creek down the bottom which was also just infested with blackberry and and various um, weed species. Um, I was looking for a way to control it um, so I used goats for about five years and in that time I turned that property from a weed infested property to a, a property that was completely free of the surface weed so I seen it at my place, I was pretty interested when across the road um, Pat came and talked to me about a goat trail to get rid of uh, the second fire bush fire, fire way that I've had in my life which is um, Fightum Gully down here uh, and he's, he and a bunch of friends now have got a bunch of goats down there and it just looks like it's going to be a repeat of what I saw 20 years ago on my own property but it's going to be something that occurs instead of just sort of to my benefit. This is to a benefit of a lot of people. We're at the East Street Spring at the moment. This is actually the place where I started to first, uh, in fact, shepherd the goats on public land and the sheep. We kind of started off by doing this targeted uh, grazing in a way. A lot of this area behind me you can see was fairly covered over in blackberry and tall grass. Uh, and one of the first things I did was got a small herd of goats and went into some of these areas like around that spring and these small dam walls and the bridge here which was at the time in quite a bit of disrepair so we went in there with the goats who uh, took down a lot of the blackberry uh, the next stage of that was to actually start to remove there was quite a bit of debris in this area um, old uh, car parts and 
old bits of disrepaired fencing uh, and then followed through after that with sheep who took the grass down from you know a foot high to a bit lower uh, and in that way we managed to kind of take this really overgrown woody weedy tall grass uh, exotic grass um, bit of public space into essentially what you see now one of the other things we did was we repaired the bridge in the background which was lent over and collapsing into the spring uh, we got a friendly local earth worker to come with his machine and lift the old structure and then we propped it underneath and got some new material and constructed a nice level bridge so this site now has really been made accessible um, and usable as, as good community amenity because of the work of the community. So where we are now is we're at the top end of the East Street Spring. Um, people come from all around to get their water just down below there. The creek, the spring just goes all the way up this hill here and it actually starts off in, um, there's a farmer's paddock up there where he keeps his sheep. Old Tom has shepherded his goats here this is, Vasco's been doing this for six years, Tom's been doing it prior. 30. 30 years. There's a history of doing that, so in a way, one of the things that we are trying to achieve, is because we don't have farms ourselves, we're kind of doing this work almost as an urban type, um, in an urban context, and we're not farmers, we don't own farmland, but there's a history of animals being in this little settlement here. So really what we are trying to uh, do is whilst we can provide this formal service to council as a cooperative, is to actually claim the legitimacy of us having some status here on this land with our animals the brambles that you see here behind me was exactly the same across that fence line and it was all through the creek. It was taking over trees and you couldn't get down to the creek at all. The goats have cleared that. Once they cleared that, we moved on to down the creek to Cornish Hill, which was even worse, and they cleared that too. Um, we, when, once the goats cleared that, the food's obviously the gone, so we need to keep finding food for the goats. Uh, we brought them back here because the grass grasses started coming back the following season um, and then council have uh, told us we couldn't keep the goats here anymore once it's all been cleared. So we've been doing this kind of open cell grazing, a traditional form of grazing of moving the animals up and down and around the gully so that we don't have a um, huge impact on any one area in terms of depositing over depositing nutrients on a particular spot or overgrazing and um, causing problems of erosion and these sorts of things or uh, demolition of say um, native uh, diversity uh, values. What we really want from council um, and the other agencies is is a little bit more proactivity in, in their backing. Um, we're getting hurdles such as water quality. We're talking about um, grazing goats, um, herbivores uh, who have a very similar um, uh, pelletized manure, hard pelletized manure um, like wallabies and kangaroos. And I guess when it comes to the watering mon water monitoring, I mean, I, I can't see why you wouldn't involve the local high school really. Uh, I know there's an environmental program there and there's a committed environmentalist there. I, uh, I can't see why you wouldn't support a bit of sort of citizen science on that. I know that they have some skilled people up there. So that would be one of my suggestions. Get the high school involved. Right? Get, help them to monitor the water. I'm sure they'll be able to do simple things like E. coli cats and stuff like that. One of the one of the problems that we're running into in terms of looking after the amenity of the commons and public land is the continual kind of hurdles or obstacles or stops from the uh, broader agencies, including council themselves. Monitoring before you say no for a trial, yeah, that that would be my response to that. And if there is a problem, 
then you look at mitigation of that problem rather than getting rid of it because this fire hazard is lives. <laughs> it's fairly obvious to us that in terms of weed and fire mitigation this is one of the most powerful tools uh, we have on hand and really it's just old common sense made common again. I'm doing this as a small crop really between say the three of us. There's been um, a lot of family kind of involvement. Claire or Hannah or um, Meg will kind of um, be there to check on the goats and and the kids of course love it um, they're always checking on the goats and hanging out with the goats and uh, so they're kind of seeing it as an integral part of the family. Hi I'm Meg and I'm one of the families involved in our Goat Hand Cooperative and one of the things that I really like about having uh, the goats around here um, is that it's really brought our neighbours and us much closer together because we had relations with most of them but it's really brought us uh, much closer and that's been a really wonderful thing and I keep imagining other ways that we can keep the weeds down in this bush area right near us. Um, if they had people spraying there would that bring the community together? No it wouldn't. If they had big bulldozers and then just getting rid of the weeds that way would that bring the community together? And no it wouldn't and I think in rural and regional places and of course cities too that people want to be closer with their neighbours and that having the goats has really enabled that for us and I think that that's been a really uh, great opportunity for all of us and for us to be closer with the goats as well has been really special for our family. All the animals are actually getting used to how we adapt all together you know it's not just a herd in a paddock that you forget about Mm. They're kind of our second family, you know, and that's mm. how we treat them. The best thing could happen to the valley is some goats to clean it up properly, you know. So I just want to put my voice in to say that this is a worthwhile thing and I think it shows a lot of promise if you've got people who are willing to give time to the community with such a sensitive eco-friendly way of dealing with weeds, then, you know, as one rate pays, I say, cancel, get behind it. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one, go hand cooperative! That was a good one. Okay, <laughs>